SCP-618 is a perceptual anomaly causing human beings to have an aversion to green vegetables, commonly cultivars of the wild cabbage, and other food items. SCP-618 appears in 0.5% of the human population. SCP-618 manifests upon the birth of a human subject, though it does not display its effects until the subject grows to eat solid foods. This perceptual anomaly peaks between ages 3 to 5, then slowly decreases until total dormancy between the ages of 6 and 8. In some cases, approximately 2% of those affected, SCP-618 remains active to varying degrees into subjects' adulthood. The effects of SCP-618's perceptual anomaly are less influential, however, and only leave an aversion to the food items, normally culminating in the triggering of the gag reflex upon an attempt to consume the item. SCP-4019 is a substantial disagreement within the field of anatomy over the amount of orifices present on the human body. The majority of anatomical scientists have concluded that humans possess seven openings. However, studies which involve the examination of a cadaver for the purposes of disproving this conclusion universally result in the discovery of two additional orifices. These instances are located on the upper chest and forehead and allow direct access to the right ventricle and cerebral cortex, respectively. It's noted that effective studies often state that a thin flap of fat and skin covers these openings, preventing blood loss. SCP-4019 was first noted by Dr. Masood Constantini. Constantini states that the walls of the openings possess markings which are similar to those present in the scars of patients which have undergone surgery. In an unearthed entry of their personal journal, Constantini elaborated on this observation. It was as if these individuals possessed two small foreign objects within their bodies and, sometime before, during, or after their deaths, they had been forcefully removed. SCP-5652 is a microscopic entity resembling an adult female hammerhead shark, with an approximate 4 micrometer body length. SCP-5652 was discovered in Budapest within the bloodstream of Joseph Hemer, a local architect. Hemer recently arrived in Budapest from a Caribbean business trip, when he reportedly started to feel mild pain and discomfort in his cardiovascular system. Later during a medical examination, SCP-5652 was discovered and retrieved by the Embedded Foundation agents, but the pain was still present. Two days after SCP-5652's discovery, the source of the pain was found. Ten heavily damaged humanoid automatons of similar sizes to SCP-5652 were discovered embedded in the walls of Hermer's blood vessels. The automatons were noted to have disproportionately large hands. Further research revealed that the automatons were remote controlled, and a small symbol depicting a modified version of the Foundation's sigil was found printed on the chest of each automaton. Weird. SCP-3482 refers to 216 promotional posters produced by person of interest Dado for Archibald Garner, a right-wing politician running for mayor of Fellowship, Wyoming. All instances appeared overnight on September 3, 2019, in various locations around the town of Fellowship. SCP-3482 instances possess memetic properties, such that anyone who views an SCP-3482 instance will immediately forget the concept of left. The full ramifications of these effects have yet to be explored, although affected individuals will not suffer panic or confusion due to these effects. While the exact numbers are unknown, almost all of the 1,984 residents of Fellowship seem to be under the effects of SCP-3482. SCP-5097 was previously Senior Researcher Cassidy Cara, a member of the Site-17 Extra Realistics Department. On April 8, 2020, Dr. Cara spontaneously ceased existing. SCP-5097 was discovered after Foundation Artificial Intelligence Units detected a sudden loss of data associated with Dr. Kara at 9.58pm on April 9, 2020. At the same time, several personnel acquainted with Dr. Kara had noticed her lack of activity around the site and the inability to access her SkipNet email. An investigation was launched, revealing her private quarters were completely empty, with the exception of a note. Who it was addressed to is unknown. The note left by SCP-5097. I'm sorry, but today I cannot seem to find the will to even begin to can. Therefore, under these circumstances, I willn't. SCP-2600-EX is an anomalous species of trout located in <laughs> The trout are cytologically identical to speckled trout, but have shaggy white fur covering 90% of their bodies. It is not known what purpose this fur serves, but it is hypothesized that the trout have much lower body temperature than normal speckled trout. All specimens of SCP-2600-EX currently in the Foundation's possession were deceased upon discovery. SCP-2600-EX is believed to have the ability to transfer its fur to normal speckled trout via unknown means. Notice to all personnel. Director Dobson has been relieved of his position. 
Our investigation found a ring of researchers working with the director, falsifying research documents and manipulating data in order to justify further research. As of now, our data shows SCP-2600 is nothing more than a fungal infection. It has been designated explained. You will all be receiving relocation notices to projects more worthy of your time. SCP-1367 is a helium-filled balloon of common make and red coloration, measuring 45.7 centimeters from apex to inflation valve, which is tied shut by a 73.6 centimeter white string. SCP-1367, if left to float freely, will begin to maneuver towards the largest gathering of at least six individuals within 480 meters, whose aggregate mood is at least mildly positive. Tests conducted in an airtight room have proved no air current is necessary for the object's locomotion. When SCP-1367 comes within 4.5 meters of a targeted gathering, auditory abnormalities are heard by all within listening range. The amount of distinct speakers seems to be doubled, as additional voices are heard amongst the group. In cases where SCP-1367's effects go unnoticed or are disregarded, the targeted group will find themselves experiencing a slowly elevating positive mood and increasingly fewer inhibitions when it comes to social interaction. At approximately two hours of exposure, there seems to be no further effect. SCP-5812 is the group designation for a series of spectral anomalies confined to the Glasgow Necropolis. Each SCP-5812 instance is visually humanoid, albeit non-corporeal, and is present for approximately 280 days before it disappears. Addendum. Investigation into the cause of SCP-5812 appearances. We got a table here listing hypothesized cause and correlation coefficient. For those of you who flunked that class, a value of 1 implies that the two events are positively correlated, meaning one increases, the other increases. A value of negative 1 implies that the events are negatively correlated, meaning one increases, the other goes down. And a value of 0 implies no correlation. The exact cause of the correlation between birds in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary and the demanifestation of SCP-5812 instances is currently being researched. SCP-014 takes the form of an antique dinner fork, well-worn and, as near as can be estimated, not cleaned since the 1890s. The object is fashioned from the electroplated nickel silver typical of the suspected period of its manufacture, and the rightmost tine is bent degrees outward. Brown stains and mold adorn the prongs and the pits of the decorated parts of the handle. Analysis of this material seems to indicate that SCP-014 was last used on some form of beef. SCP-014 was moved to this facility in the early 1970s and seems, for all intents and purposes, to be an entirely mundane dinner fork. If it is possessed of any extraordinary qualities, these are known only to those in the very highest echelon of this project's coordinators, whose representatives assure us that SCP-014 is, quote, very important, end quote. Officers who have spent time alone with SCP-014 are unanimous in their appreciation that the object is of great significance, hence its continued presence at this site, though none can quite say why. SCP-6150 is a Voskhod 3KV spacecraft re-entry module, bearing heavy exterior damage. Metal implements have welded all apertures on the module shut. An opaque substance covers all viewports on the inside. Occasional noises originate from the object, including metallic pounding, scraping, and muffled vocalizations seeking help in distressed Russian or screaming. Foundation personnel discovered SCP-6150 in an abandoned facility near the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Facility interior displayed immense fire damage. No surviving documentation from the facility or otherwise exists in Foundation custody, though a discovered spray-painted message on the entrance wall reads, translated from Russian, Voskhon 3, which pertains to a thought unflown space mission, and codename the Threshold, the context of which is unknown. SCP-5334 is a gaseous planet orbiting the star HD44219, approximately 164 light years from Earth. SCP-5334's ring system is composed of approximately 2.7 billion glass bottles, each containing various alcoholic beverages. Analysis of recovered bottles during a faster-than-light anomalous exoplanet survey suggests they are at least 800 years old, and each bottle's alcohol content is exceptionally high, ranging from 40 to 70 percent. The bottles have no discernible markings or identifying characteristics besides damage caused by micro-impacts. Approximately once every 200 days, roughly 20,000 to 150,000 glass bottles will spontaneously disappear from the ring system. Following this, SCP-5334 will undergo multiple erratic alterations to its orbit, deviating as wildly as 20 degrees from its stable configuration. These erratic alterations will slowly become less prominent, and will eventually result in SCP-5334 returning to its original orbital path. Moved to Site-19, 
1993. Origin is as of yet unknown. It is constructed from concrete and rebar with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Line of sight must not be broken at any time with SCP-173. Personnel assigned to enter the container are instructed to alert one another before blinking. Object is reported to attack by snapping the neck at the base of the skull, or by strangulation. In the event of an attack, personnel are to observe Class IV hazardous object containment procedures. Personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one is present inside. This is considered normal and any change in this behavior should be reported to the acting HMCL supervisor on duty. The reddish-brown substance on the floor is a combination of feces and blood. Origin of these materials is unknown. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. SCP-5991 is an anomalous phenomenon that triggers whenever a human successfully consumes an entire Christian Bible. When a subject consumes the Bible, an entity will manifest in front of them referred to as SCP-5991-1. SCP-5991-1 is a pale, emaciated entity with no orifices besides its mouth. SCP-5991-1 has no teeth, does not possess eye sockets nor eyes, and is wearing a crown of thorns. SCP-5991-1 will approach the subject and unhinge its own jaw. SCP-5991-1 will then violently shove the subject down its throat and into its stomach which is noted to be much larger than SCP-5991-1 on the inside. Once the subject is consumed by SCP-5991-1, they will land on a wooden boardwalk, which is built on a floor comprised of biological tissue of unknown composition. Subjects are able to freely exit the stomach by pressing a large, pulsating orange sac located behind where the subject lands. SCP-4574 are two animate conglomerations of primitive spears, hand axes, clubs, and javelins, each in the shape of a smilodon. The weapons compromising SCP-4574 are of similar craftsmanship, and many are decorated with feathers, leather strips, carvings, or dyes. The majority, approximately 80% of these weapons, share similar compositions, and collectively date to approximately 13,000 BC. SCP-4574 inhabit a large, partially submerged cave system in the state of Quintana Roo, Mexico. Cave paintings line the portions of the cave above water, dating to the same time period as the spears. SCP-4574 guard the caves as a pair. They will not attack those who enter unless the intruder attacks them or attempts to touch the cave paintings. Otherwise, SCP-4574 are relatively docile. They communicate with each other verbally in an indistinct language and show signs of intelligence well beyond that of ordinary felines. SCP-1057 is an animate empty space, five meters long, in the shape of an adult tiger shark. It does not appear to have any mass. However, it displaces water by an unknown mechanism. SCP-1057's refractive index is approximately that of air, which makes it partially visible when immersed in salt water. As well, its anti-shadow is discernible under bright light. Experiments involving the insertion of inanimate objects into SCP-1057's, quote, body have revealed that there is nothing there. However, further experiments along these lines are contraindicated, as this triggers extremely aggressive behavior on the part of SCP-1057. SCP-1057's behavior has been assessed by Foundation ichthyologists as being within normal parameters for an adult tiger shark. Any food consumed by SCP-1057 disappears, with the exception of the non-digestible fluorescent dyes, which are regularly added to SCP-1057's food to facilitate monitoring its behavior. SCP-1268 is a human male of indeterminate race with brown eyes and black hair. While SCP-1268 is capable of basic motor functions and self-maintenance, it does not appear to be capable of communication, nor does it show signs of emotion or higher intelligence. SCP-1268 will wander aimlessly until it is in proximity to a large group of people. In these situations, SCP-1268 will go into the crowd and slowly move through it. During this process, the behavior of those in the group will be altered in a predictable manner. Zero to two minutes, no effects are visible. Two to seven minutes, persons in the crowd are visibly nervous, turning their heads frequently and moving more quickly than before SCP-1268 entered the crowd. Seven to 14 minutes, persons other than SCP-1268 begin to experience disorientation and confusion. 14 minutes forward. Almost all persons in the crowd panic and attempt to leave the area by any means necessary. Subjects affected this way show a distinct lack of concern for the safety of themselves and others. Anomalous effects will cease after SCP-1268 is no longer in the crowd. SCP-6555 refers to the remains of an unidentified structure on the rogue celestial body of XEO-8537-A. 
discovered in 26,576 HE, after deep space satellites detected faint electromagnetic fluctuations. SCP-6555 emits a constant broadcast of archaic emergency radio frequencies from its epicenter. Research probes dispatched to the surface of XCO 8537-A for observation of SCP-6555 have, thus far, been inconclusive. The configuration and layout of SCP-6555 suggests that the structure was, at one point, semi-modular. Ventilation, air conditioning, and other primitive systems present within SCP-6555 show that the interior of the building was once adequately maintained and supplied with oxygen. Miscellaneous calcium fragments and ligaments almost identical in DNA composition as that of ancient mammalian organisms, were discovered nearby scp 6555 central transmitter. Fragments have been dated to be at least several thousand years old, indicating unnaturally quick and potentially anomalous decomposition. SCP-590 appears to be a young male, approximately 16 years of age. The only benefit he receives from his powers is apparent longevity, as he has not aged since his arrival at the Foundation. Although in all aspects a normal teenager, when SCP-590 touches any other human, he heals all injuries and ailments, physical and mental, they may have. As an odd side effect, SCP-590 receives the injuries upon himself, being subjected to all the pain and the aftermath. To elucidate, when healing a physical wound, SCP-590 not only feels the pain of receiving the wound, but gains scars relevant to where the wound was on the subject. Any mental healing performed is transferred directly, resulting in SCP-590 gaining whatever mental aberration he was healing. Those wounds he receives from using his powers accumulate. SCP-4564-A is the collective designation for all first-run copies of the video game Fishing Derby. The initiation of SCP-4564's anomaly occurs when any instance is played upon an Atari VCS game's console. Anytime a player successfully catches a fish with the value of 6 pounds, a random eel matching the above criteria, henceforth known as SCP-4564-A, will proceed to exit the water in search of the nearest human being, hereafter referred to as SCP-4564-B. The SCP-4564-A instance will attempt to insert itself into the human's gastrointestinal tract via the anus or mouth. The SCP-4564-A instance will release a neurotoxic slime, which induces a powerful urge for SCP-4564-B to travel to the sea. Upon reaching the sea, SCP-4564-A instances will exit the victim's body via the first submerged orifice. Both will proceed to lose all anomalous effects, although often distressed. SCP-4564-B have never been harmed, and can be hosted between one and instances of SCP-4564-A at a time. Ah! Thank you for listening. Site42 Studios and its staff are funded by viewers like you. Please become a patron or visit our merch store at the link in our bio to support our work. Secure. Contain. Protect.